So good morning, my name is Chao Min, and so I'm so delighted to share a part of my research here with you today. And in order to show you the latest uh, research progress in my PhD, I have changed my title to integrating the uh, simulation models to improve prediction of crop change from geo-based multispectral data using deep learning. And the research objective is try to improve the crop characterization with the aim of digital technologies. And the high super phenotyping is one of the most promising technology that we can use in agriculture today. And the high super phenotyping means the use of the proximal sensor and the imaging technologies to um, uh, for the phenotype measurement. And nowadays we have a lot of um, platforms kept can be used to do the high super phenotyping from the ground based uh, robots to the satellite. And um, the general application pilot for the high super phenotyping is like this we use the uh, sensor mounted on different platforms to collect the sensing data, which can describe the crop growth status. And then we try to uh, extract the crop change from the sensing data. And in this process, we would we will need a predictive model that describes a, a signal chain relationship um, so that we can input the sensing data into this model to predict the crop change that we are interested in. So now the question comes to how can we create such a predictive model or such a relationship? Um, the conventional, the conventional no ways like this, we use the measure crop trait or the observed sensing data to build an empirical relationship. Um, but the problem is such a relationship generally uh, size specific. That means it can be applied to a wider con situations that is quite different to the environment that used for collecting the data to build this relationship. So uh, what we are thinking about is try to generate more a general relationship that can be used to wider environments. Um, the good thing is that we know this process from the sensing data to the crop change or from the crop change to the sensing data can be described using the radioactive transfer model. So if we integrate the radioactive transfer model to the high super phenotyping, we can create a more general relationship uh, in two ways. The first way is we can just use the cause-effect relationship built in the radioactive transfer model so that we can just um, back calculate this. I can't use this one. Okay, we can just back calculate the crop change from the canopy refining data. Or the second way is we can just use the right active transfer model to simulate a synthetic data set and then we can rebuild a relationship from this synthetic data set. And compared to the collection of the measure of uh, the collection of the experimental data is quite easy to generate a synthetic data set that can represent the diverse growth and uh, observation conditions. But the problem is um, we cannot consider the biological country among, among the crop change in the traditional way to generate a synthetic data set. So um, here I will try to propose a conceptual framework to introduce the biological country in the synthetic data set in order to build a more powerful predictive model. So here is the framework. And in this part, that's the traditional way to I've used the right additive sensor model to generate synthetic data set and build a predictive model based on this synthetic data set. But in our work, what we do, what we did is try to use the uh, crop growth model to inform the input variables of this right additive sensor model. Uh, and this is realized by converting the output variables of the crop growth model as the input variables of the radioactive transfer model so that we can just um, uh, generate the input variable of the radioactive transfer model that are constrained to the crop growth biology defined in the crop growth model. And then we can have the better radioactive 
uh, the battery canopy refractance that a uh, battery refract the real canopy status, and then we will have the more uh, accurate and stable prediction. That's our final objective. So uh, what's the main difference between these two uh, synthetic data sets with and without biological content? Um, the main difference uh, lies in the combination of the input variables of the radioactive sensor model. For that synthetic data set without the biological content, the input variables of the radioactive sensor model are combined randomly. And but for that data set with biological content, the input variables are combined and constrained by the biology defined in the crop growth model. So here I will show you an example um, for these two data sets. Like uh, here, this figure shows the spatial co-distribution of the LAI and the leaf coffee content. So the back point shows the combination of these two uh, crop traits in the uh, data set with the contrast, while the red points indicate the combinations of these two crop traits in the data set with biological contrast. So we can see um, introducing the biological contrast can potentially remove those combinations that cannot exist in the real crop growth status defined by the crop growth model. So uh, here, in order to highlight the potentials or advantage of adding the uh, biological country in the synthetic data set, I uh, trade two uh, predictive models uh, based on the synthetic training data and one model using the data set with, without the country and another one using the uh, data set with the country. And uh, both of these models, I, uh, using the five band refractance to predict four crop traits simultaneously. And, and then I will test this, uh, these models on the synthetic test set to see their theoretical performance. And then I also try to validate our models on the field experimental data. And this figure shows the field design of the, uh, this field experiment conducted in 2006. And from this figure, we can see uh, there are on this field experiment included multiple genotypes and different management practices so that it can generate uh, contrasting canopies that can be used to uh, validate our model. Uh, so now here's the theoretical performance uh, of the uh, predictive model on the synthetic test set. And the X axis shows the uh, no value of the crop trade, while the Y axis shows the predictive value of the uh, uh, of the crop trade. So the for each uh, figure pair, the left one shows the model performance without the crop trade, while the right, right one shows the model performance with the with crop trade. And we can see adding the biological crop trade can improve the estimation accuracy and stability, and for the estimation of leaf coffee content, we can see uh, adding valorous content can enable the leaf water content to be estimated using the band refractance in this visible to near infrared range. But actually, there's no effective information to be used to extract the leaf water content in this range. And here is the, is the uh, practical performance. And we can see it's quite hard to reproduce the accurate prediction on the theoretical a data set when tested this model on the real data, but we can still see the advantage of adding the biological contract because uh, the model with the contract failed to estimate the leaf water content, but the model with contract enabled the leaf water content to be estimated. So here uh, we can have the Steve findings, and the first one is adding the biological contract uh, among a related variables enabled prediction based on the relationship between the crop trade and sensing data, as well as based on the association among the crop trade themselves. And then if we add in this biological country association can substantially improve the prediction accuracy and also enable some crop trade to be estimated from the range without effective information in credit. So if you want to know more about this, our research, 
can just have a look at our research paper just published this year in JSB. And this, the field experiment we conducted in 2006 was funded by JIDC and applied to fund of China Scholarship Council and UQ and CIRO for providing financial support in my PhD. And I also want to thank my supervisors and my colleagues uh, for giving me advice in this work and this presentation. Thank you.